you're going to look at the currency which held which closed at 83.75.85 to the dollar on Monday, slightly weaker from Friday's close of 83.17.90 and crossing over to the Nairobi Securities Exchange. It closed a, po a half a po half a percentage point lower to 4,866.05 points, dragged down for the second day by Kenya Power after the government rejected its proposal to rise the electricity tariffs. With us in studio is Agustin Misoka, a research analyst with investment capital with Sterling Capital to help us dig deeper with these numbers. Welcome, Misoka. Thank, thank you for Safaricom is the number impressive. We have a 47 percent increase in pre-tax profit. Is that number impressive for you? I think uh, the number was quite impressive. Uh, we released a note uh, yesterday on Safaricom and uh, our EPS was 0 0.43, so for us we really expected uh, the impressive performance. Again, uh, looking at uh, the data segment or the non-voice segment, it has been uh, uh, the strongest performer, uh, boosting the revenues to, to uh, 124 billion. And again, uh, voice revenues, you know, uh, uh, most people expected them to, to stagnate, but again, uh, performed quite well at 77.7 uh, billion. So the, the results for us were uh, pretty much what we expected, and they were really impressive. And for the non voice, you saw that jumping by 29% uh, to 40 billion. You're talking of MPESA, you're talking of data. Uh, and you're also talking at uh, looking at also SMS. Is that the key driver that you're looking at for you know looking at going forward? Yeah, for me, I'll be really keen on M-Pesa. Those are the key drivers for the business. You know, most of the uh, subscribers. You know, the Safaricom right now having 88 percent of the subscribers on uh, the M-Pesa platform. So that is really the the key driver for the business. Again, data another segment that uh, really is growing at an exponential uh, rate. Uh, right now at a 41.1 percent uh, internet penetration rate. So still much more headroom uh, for growth. And that really for them is uh, an, an, another a big performer. And again, looking at uh, mobile uh, internet penetra uh, penetration, 99% uh, of the new uh, subscription coming in from uh, the mobile uh, uh, su subscribers. Um, Safaricom being again the dominant player with uh, their strong network. So for me, uh, data and M-Pesa will uh, really be the key drivers of uh, growth of the revenues going forward. Looking at the recommended dividend that was announced today, a 41% increase to 0 0.31 shillings, which is of course the highest that Safaricom has actually issued. Does that come as a surprise to you at a time also where they're looking at uh, retaining some of that capital for investments, you know, for their capex? Uh, our discussion earlier on with management, uh, they pointed out that uh, they will be, you know, proposing to the board uh, uh, issuing a dividend of 85% of uh, free cash flow, and I think that's exactly what they've done. I, I think they still have uh, uh, some uh, more money and say reserves for for the ex expansions uh, going forward. They're talking of 24 billion in uh, expansion for their network. So I think they, they, they still have uh, uh, some muscle and some more money to you know, expand their network. So for, for us, again, uh, uh, from our discussion with management, we really expected uh, uh, high dividends this year. And uh, where would they be sourcing the 24 billion if they're not retaining some of the dividends to actually boost their, their cash flow? Uh, I think uh, the, the dividends are uh, f after the free cash flow that they have after having factored in some of uh, uh, the... Mm -hmm the expenditures. So I, I still think they have some reserves. I don't think they'll be issuing any debt or be, they'll be going out to look for, for any uh, new cap, uh, source of uh, income. But uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But I still think they have the, 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 the financial power to you know, implement their strategy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Looking at the data that came in from the Nairobi Securities Exchange yesterday, Safaricom was one of the stocks that was punished by investors, uh, dropping by 0.7% to about 6 shillings and 90 cents. Is it that the, sh the stock is overheating or it was profit taking? What was the main reason for the drop that we saw yesterday? For me, I'll. Uh, place it on profit taking. Mm -hmm. The share having touched 7.30 last week, most investors will uh, want to cash in on their gains and probably uh, come in at uh, some later uh, time after you know taking their profits. So I think after the impressive performance today, we might see the, the, the stock rallying upwards. Uh, but uh, for yesterday, I can place it more on, on profit taking. Okay, now we can look at the flip side at Kenya Power, which is one of the stocks that has been punishing the main NSE 
20 share index on Friday it shared 4.3 percent and yesterday it shared 4.2 uh, percent mm -hmm. uh, and of course it's on the back of the government rejecting its proposals to raise tariffs is this something that you expect to continue or is it a knee-jerk reaction that is likely to you know to cool off with time Beatrice, uh, I'd like to point out that uh, KPLC, you know, while proposing the uh, t tariffs, they mentioned that their profits might take a hit, you know, going down by up to 53%. So maybe investors are, you know, uh, keen to exit at the moment. But I still feel that for KPLC, uh, according to what the deputy president was mentioning, they really need to look at ways of, you know, reducing their costs and some of the measures that they are taking and probably uh, going forward, I think it will be possible for them to reduce their costs without having to hike their tariffs. But at the moment, I think uh, the information that uh, is in, the, in, is in, in the, the, the market right now that they might take a hit, you know, that's really what investors are, are, are trying to uh, Probably to a word of advice from you, maybe a little bit of consultancy on the end. Where do they need to reduce their costs? I think some of the measures that they've taken is, you know, are rolling out a, a, a f f f metro fiber, you know, f uh, instead of the normal lines that we've been seeing, which are really affected by uh, rains and, or, or the affected by the weather. Again, the prepaid meters that they are, they are, they are, they are, they are installing on um, most of the, the households, that's a, an area where they'll be really, they'll be able to cut down on costs. So for me, I feel they really have uh, ways in which they can minimize their costs. But again, looking at uh, the fact that they really wanted this money to, to expand, then that means then they'll have to, to look for other sources, All maybe right. even debt.